You know, that launch was so spectacular, Roy, I think uh, everybody would like to see it again. So let's roll the videotape and take a look at the launch and listen to it again. Eight, seven, six, five. We have engine start. Two, one. We have ignition and we have lift off. Lift off. Thirty-two minutes after the hour, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. Roger roll. Houston confirms good roll program. Standing by for main engine throttle down to control structure. Loads on Challenger Drake Max Q. Six miles, downrange three miles. Main engine throttle's going back to 100%. Challenger's go at throttle up. Challenger, Houston, you're go at throttle up. Roger, Houston, Roger that. One minute, 30 seconds, velocity 3,700 feet per second, altitude uh, 12 and a half miles. The reason why it was launched at this hour was that the miles. shuttle has, a, has to put that Indian satellite in a certain place at a certain time, and this was the only way to do it. A lot of our satellites were built or designed back in the days before men were flying them, and of course an unmanned rocket doesn't care what time of day you launch it. Um, and I think that is going to be true of the space business in the future. We're going to build satellites that uh, do their job as cheaply as possible, and it'll be up to the man to accommodate to it. And these satellites have a certain number of constraints. Mort, you're probably familiar with them. Uh, you, the sun has to be in a certain position as it makes a trip from low Earth orbit up to a geosynchronous orbit to avoid thermal problems on a satellite and avoid problems with its navigation sensors. And when you meld those together with the uh, requirement to have tracking coverage, we get into situations like this, 215 uh, launches. Well, as the shuttle Challenger begins another assault on the frontiers of space and conquers another social barrier with a racially integrated crew, all continues to go well after a delay because of the weather. A reminder that as this mission began with the first nighttime launch of the shuttle, it will conclude with the first nighttime landing of a shuttle. That's scheduled for next Monday, Labor Day, in the early hours of the morning, 3.35 a.m. Eastern Time. The shuttle will touch down at Edwards Air Force Base in California. My thanks to astronaut Roy Bridges for his advice and counsel. And one more reminder that we'll continue our coverage later during the morning, and we'll have a wrap-up of the day's activities on the CBS Evening News, including another look at that dazzling launch. I'm Morton Dean, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. We have engine start. Two, one. This is Colonel Special Report from CBS News on the launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger. When the five astronauts gathered for breakfast soon after they were awakened at 10 last night, all were cheerful despite the weather. Outside, severe thunderstorms passed over the Kennedy Space Center. The bad weather continued as the astronauts were driven out to the pad. NASA officials delayed the launch. Finally, the weather cleared and the rockets were fired 17 minutes late. Five, we have engine start. Two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff, 32 minutes after the hour and the shuttle has cleared the tower. For miles around the launch pad, the cloudy night sky became as light as day. This was the view from Fort Myers, Florida, 150 miles away. 
A few hours later, Commander Richard Truly, who flew on the second shuttle mission, described the differences in the cockpit between a daytime and a nighttime launch to mission controllers. You couldn't see anything because of the light. It got brighter and brighter. The light was about 500 times more than I remember on STS-2. NASA plans to make night launches a routine part of future shuttle operations. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Cape Canaveral. About eight hours after they took off, the astronauts turned on television cameras to show mission control what was going on aboard the Challenger. Okay, John, we're all going to wander down towards the uh, mid-deck so you can see our smiling faces. That's Dale Gardner in Challenger talking to mission control as Richard Truly floats through the scene. Dan Brandenstein shared the narration. Richard's doing a doctor appointment. What he's doing is measuring a hole. Weightless truly measured an inch taller than he does on Earth. Okay, there comes Guy down the uh, port uh, inner deck access. You can see that we've all grown some white spots on our foreheads. Roger, we can see that. And for those, those of you who don't know what those are, those are part of Dr. Bill's uh, experiments. There are three electrodes, one in the middle of the forehead and one by the uh, right eye and the left eye, which uh, he wires us up so he can uh, record that stuff on his recorders. Dr. Bill is Dr. William Thornton, at 54, the oldest astronaut ever to fly. He's wiring the astronauts to find out why some of them get sick in space. Guy Bluford, America's first black astronaut in space, continued working on experiments and had very little to say. Okay, watch Dr. Bill. He's heading into his office now. The so-called office is the Challenger's airlock. Tomorrow, they'll launch a commercial satellite for India. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they'll maneuver a four-ton payload, and Monday, they come in for an early morning landing in California. Roy Neal, NBC News in Houston. The Space Center was swamped by a persistent thunderstorm. And for a while, NASA seriously considered giving the crew a rain check for another day. Guy Bluford might have to wait to become America's first black astronaut to visit space. Dr. Bill Thornton might have to wait to set his record as the oldest astronaut to fly. He's 54. Suddenly, the weather began to respect those ambitions. The rain stopped, the lightning danced away, and it was time for the shuttle to light up the sky. 17 minutes late, the Challenger was moving up. We have engine start, two, one. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff, 32 minutes after the hour and the shuttle has cleared the tower. Of the eight shuttle flights, it was the first launched at night. Spectacular on the ground and in the air. Uh, it looked like we were uh, inside of a ball of flame for about 15 seconds there. That was in, in fact, it looked like it was never going to stop. There was some frolicking in the topsy-turvy world of zero-G today, but there will be some business to take care of, including a communication satellite to deliver, an experiment separating human cells to work on, and some more data to be gathered to at long last help learn why so many astronauts are gripped by a temporary mysterious space sickness. Morton Dean, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The bolts of lightning that lashed out at the shuttle just hours before its scheduled liftoff turned out to be mere previews to the real light show. That happened 17 minutes late, 2.32 a.m. Eastern Time. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff, 32 minutes after the hour and the shuttle has cleared the tower. The flames from the rockets turned darkness into dawn, and the clouds that had nearly kept Challenger earthbound earlier now magnified the roar. And if you think it was spectacular from the ground, inside, Commander Richard Truly said it was daylight almost all the way up. Pilot Dan Brandenstein said when the external tank separated, it was like the inside of a bonfire. Mission Specialist Dale Gardner described it this way. It looked like we were uh, inside of a ball of flame for about 15 seconds there. That was in, in fact, it looked like it was never going to stop. Once in orbit, the crew went quickly to their tasks. Guy Bluford, the nation's first black in space, tending to the pharmaceutical experiment. Dr. Bill Thornton holding office hours to study space sickness. No apparent symptoms so far. Brandon Stein enjoying a carrot in zero gravity. Commander Truly reported that despite a few scratches, Challenger survived the liftoff well. And uh, just generally a great time is being had by all. With the mission proceeding so smoothly, the focus now is on the launch of the communication satellite for the government of India. Before dawn, tomorrow. Lynn Sher, ABC News at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida.